Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video we're going to be looking at the Cafe Messino 1 espresso machine, explaining exactly what it is and why I think this could change home espresso. This is one of their tester units they've sent me on loan. This has been used a lot by the Cafe Messino guys and other reviewers, so if it looks a bit scratched and so on, that's why. And this isn't a freebie, it's just on loan, and when this one goes back, I'm buying one because I love it. This isn't a sponsored video, I will put an affiliate link in the description though, so if you buy it through that link, I'll earn a commission. I've got to fund this very expensive hobby somehow. If you don't want me to earn a commission, just go directly to cafemacino.com and don't click my link. The easiest way to describe this is that it's an affordable alternative to the Decent DE1, which isn't helpful if you have no clue what the Decent DE1 is, so I'll explain. Feel free to use the chapters below to skip if you don't need this explanation. To get great extraction for mega tasting espresso usually requires a combination of high-end machinery and well-honed barista skills. The Decent DE1 uses technology instead to deliver the kind of shots that would often require more expensive equipment and lots of experience. There are various profiles, coffee profiles aimed at getting specific types of results with specific types of coffees and espresso machine emulation profiles that are created to mimic famous espresso machines. There are preset profiles and there's a community of users who share profiles with each other. Decent has changed espresso, I don't think there's any doubt about that. A lot of the stuff we know about espresso extraction has come from the Decent DE1. For me, the only issue with the DE1 is affordability. It's not at about $3,600 in the States. They're just over £3,000 in the UK, including delivery and import duty. And a lot of people just can't afford or justify that kind of spend on an espresso machine. The reason I think the Caf Messino 1 could change home espresso is it could bring this kind of experience to a much wider audience. Also, as I'll explain, I think potentially Caf Messino have done a couple of things even better than decent, especially when it comes to the community. There are various other DE1 alternatives been released. Most of them are less affordable than the DE1. Yes, there is the Gazuino project, which is currently the most affordable alternative involving modern and existing machine. But in terms of a machine out of the box with decent style tech, there's nothing else quite like this that I'm aware of at this kind of price. I've got a Gajuino modded classic here, by the way, and I'll do a video with that soon. It's great. The way it makes a classic perform is really quite something, particularly where steaming milk is concerned, actually. But it's not quite this for various reasons. Subscribe and stuff to see the video on that when we've done it. This is €1,060 right now, about £905, $1,140 in the States, plus shipping and whatever it ends up costing in import duty, which I believe is about €100 to €150 Euros in Europe. If you're anywhere in Europe and you're a member of my Brewtime mailing list, drop me an email with Caf Messino in the subject, and if I still have a discount code at that time, I'll email you with it, and that will give you free delivery. This is a pre-order price for the next production batch. The RRP is listed at €1,250, which is about £1,070, roughly $1,350. Decent wanted to make a more affordable machine initially. In fact, the project that ultimately led to Decent had a target RRP of $400 and an early bird price of $200. I'll link in the description to James Hoffman's video about this, including an interview with John Buckman, the founder of Decent. When Decent first announced the machine, they were still promising affordability, not quite $400, but $999. They found it just wasn't possible when manufacturing a machine to produce them for this kind of money. Sergio and Jorge Hurtado, brothers from Madrid, wanted a DE1, couldn't afford it, so they made one themselves. Their idea was instead of manufacturing a machine from the ground up, which is clearly very expensive and difficult to do, they'd create a board that they can install into an existing machine and develop an app that controls the machine to deliver an alternative to the DE1 at a more affordable price tag. They launched with a Kickstarter campaign in 2021 and it didn't get funded. They persevered though and they've had a couple of rounds of production models so far. At the time of filming, they're doing another round of pre-order sales with the next batch of machines currently been manufactured. The base machine itself, as you'll see, looks almost identical to the new Turin Legato and Me Coffee Apex. It's not the same base machine. It's clearly the same externally, same external components. The steam boiler and the LCD are the same, but the Legato and the Apex have a pressure gauge. They use a different thermoblock and the configuration internally is slightly different too. The base machine Caf Messino use is the same as the DB1 from the Hungarian firm AVX, which has been on the market for a few years at the time of filming, but it's still not the same machine. The Caf Messino 1 has the Caf Messino board, which replaces the board of the base machine, and all of the controllers on the board are connected to all of the sensors, the pump and the heated elements of the boiler and the thermoblock. 
They also install a pressure sensor and a pressure regulator, which ensure a stable brew pressure and give the pressure feedback for the app. This is how it can report the puck resistance, for example. They also install a flow meter temporarily so they can calibrate the flow rate and it comes with a Cafemcino Bluetooth scales which connects to the app. Akaya have also given them the ability to allow it to pair with their scales too. Jorge tells me that they chose this machine because they were so happy with the brew boiler, the thermoblock and the availability of spare parts. The only thing they weren't particularly impressed with about this machine didn't actually matter by the time they've added their board. It's not the most inspiring looking machine. It basically looks like a copy and paste of just about any single boiler espresso machine, Profitech Go in particular. But it appears to be a very capable machine and this approach of picking an affordable machine to install their motherboard into actually seems very smart. So with all that said, let's now look at the machine itself. We'll put the dimensions on the screen. 550 mil stainless steel brew boiler with a 1500 watt heating element. Separate 1400 watt stainless steel thermoblock heater for steam. 1.7 litre water tank. 58 millimetre group and porter filter, both stainless steel. Adjustable PID, you can change the brew temperature via the up and down arrows on the PID itself. And with the Cafemcino 1, you can do that on the app too. The PID screen also gives you a shot timer and it times the steam too, which is interesting. Three way solenoid, vibration pump, Barista light. There's no overpressure valve, which we'll come back to. There is a needle valve, which we'll also come back to. It comes with the Bluetooth scales, which connect to the app. And as I've said, it'll also work with the Akaya scales. The needle valve, as I've mentioned, is an interesting thing to see on a machine like this. Theoretically, this could lead to mods on the AVX DB1, Me Coffee Apex and Turin Legato, but Cafemcino have informed me that this doesn't need to be messed with on their machine. It's only used during calibration. The app controls the flow rate. The base machine doesn't have an OPV, which is one of the main cons I've seen people discussing about the Apex and the Legato. It doesn't matter with the Cafemcino 1 as the pressure is controlled by the app. For anyone who isn't familiar with the term, an OPV overpressure valve is a helpful thing to have when using espresso machines with traditional non-pressurised baskets. They fire off additional pressure in the basket at whatever they're set to. So when you're trying to aim for a maximum of nine bars in the basket, having a valve set to fire off the excess pressure above that is helpful when you're trying to dial in. We control the pressure in the basket with grind size, but having an OPV is helpful. So this doesn't have a physical OPV, but it doesn't matter for the Cafemcino 1 as the app controls the pressure. So in terms of the machine itself, yeah, it's a bit generic looking, but a 550mm stainless steel brew boiler, stainless steel group, PID, separate thermoblock for steam, pro steam wand, adjustable pre-infusion, three-way solenoid, barista light, that's a fairly solid base machine, especially given that it's made with fairly generic standard parts that are easy to source. So now let's talk about the app. Firstly, just let me paint a picture for anyone who might not be sure what's so special about this machine. Let's say you buy a bag of coffee, I don't know, maybe chocolate brownie blend from seaworks.co.uk. What if, instead of having to understand all this nonsense about ratio, yield, etc., you just go into the recipes and look for the Seaworks chocolate brownie profile. You just select that profile, everything is set up for you. Dose, yield, brew temperature, literally all you need to do is grind the weight of coffee that the recipe states, tamp, lock the portafilter in, put your cup on the scale, the machine does everything. You don't even need to tear the scales or press a button to stop it. It just stops at the target yield for the extraction the profile was set to. So let's say you try that, but then you start to get a bit more into the home barista hobby and you hear that you might want to just try a slightly different temperature. You just tweak it in the quick edit section like this. What if you wanted to try a slightly different ratio? Again, you just do this. You don't even need to do the maths. The machine does it for you. What about grind size and other info? What if you could go through other users' saved shots, see what they've said about them and read through their notes, including what grinder and what grind size. This for me is how this machine could really change home espresso once enough people are using this machine. We could even get to a point where your monthly discovery subscription box lands on your doormat and thanks to the size of the community, all you need to do is look for each new bag of coffee in the app and pick a profile. You might even get dialed in before you reach the bottom of the bag, imagine that. Once you've found your feet with the machine, you can also create profiles and share them and share your shots. When you pull a shot that amazes you, you just click the save icon, as you can see here, and then you can give as much detail as you like, where the coffee's from, name of the beans, roast date, roast level, and so on. And then just put as much info in there as you like. For example, you might want to share with people what grinder you have and what the grind size was. 
This is one of the things that I think the Cafmacino app potentially does even better than the Decent. The Decent has a great user community, but it's outside of the app on a few different platforms, Facebook, Discord, and so on. With Cafmacino, it's right here inside the app. You just go through the profiles, click download, and when you click the coffee icon, a couple of seconds later, you've already got that profile loaded. Obviously, the more users there are, the better, and I think there's even more potential along these lines if this ends up being a multi-machine app, if they license it to other brands and or by making it available as a mod. By the way, click the pinned comment for the profiles that Cafmacino have made with the Seaworks coffee. It could even change the way we buy coffee. I can see a future where users choose their profile and then buy the corresponding coffee. So I'm going through the profiles and I see someone saying, flipping heck, this shot using this profile and this bean made the best oat flat white I've ever tasted. So if I'm someone who drinks oat flat whites, I'll say, yes, thank you very much. I'll download the profile. I'll grab some of that coffee and hopefully I'll enjoy the same flat whites. Another thing the app can do that I don't think the Decent does currently, but apologies if I'm wrong, is you can throw two coffees next to each other on the screen and study them all the way through the shot. So if you used a puck screen on one shot or did a different WDT method, tamped with a slightly different amount of force or whatever, you can look through both shots on the screen and see how they differ all the way through the shot. You can even compare your shot with somebody else's shot. For example, let's say someone who gave their shot four stars and said it was epic, but your shot tasted like dirt. Well, it was just ground, lol. You can go through them side by side and try and figure out why and then tweak things accordingly. It's early days for the app still, but I found using this machine a great experience. I didn't think I'd enjoy the high-tech approach, but I really do. In addition to coffee profiles, there are machine emulation profiles. So let's say I've heard that lever machines produce really nice shots. I select the generic lever machine profile. As you'll see, the description tells us this recipe emulates a traditional lever machine. If we have a look at this one, it's set at 95 degrees Celsius, nine second pre-infusion up to 3.3 bars, ramp up to nine bars, and then a slow gradual decline in pressure. Again, I can go in and tweak the dose and or the ratio if I want to and the temperature and then start. Currently, there's a Lamazocco Linear Profile, Londinium, Olympia Cremina, Olympia Cremina with the Fellini Move, Fema E61, Slayer, and I'm sure we'll see more machine profiles on there over time. There's even a Cafe Barista Bar machine emulation with extra micro <laughs> micro microbobulation. What if I'm an advanced user and I want to create my own profiles? This is actually way easier than you might think. Okay, it's not that easy to know what you should set all these things to, but if you do know, it's really quite easy to create profiles. You just click the plus icon, choose a pressure profile, a flow profile or advanced for both, and then you create your steps, up to 15 steps if you like, which would seem a bit nuts, but hey, if you wanted to, you could create a 15 step profile. Or you might wanna set up your own simple two to three step profile. These steps can include pressure, flow rate and brew temperature. So not only can you create custom pre-infusion, custom pressure or flow profiles, you can also create custom temperature profiles by changing the brew temperature at that step. The Decent DE1 is more effective when it comes to temperature profiling because that mixes cold water with hot on the way to the group. Decent can allow for big, fast and precise brew temperature changes. The Cafmacino is limited to smaller changes, but I think a lot of people probably wouldn't need to add a big temperature jump in the steps anyway. You can also pull manual profile shots on the Cafmacino or do half and half. The Slayer profile, for example, is semi-manual, allowing you to choose when to change from pre-brew to nine bar and then from nine bar to six bar. There's even a T profile and they do a T porter filter. I've not got the T porter filter yet. We'll be getting hold of it and including that in a future video. I've actually brewed tea without the tea porter filter with the tea profile. And I have to say it's pretty good. Very drinkable, even without using the tea porter filter. Let's talk about steam. I wasn't expecting amazing things from a Thermoblock steam wand, but there's usually little or no condensation in the tip after I've purged once. It takes a few seconds for the steam to start and from opening the valve, including that few seconds of getting up to temperature, it takes about 30 to 35 seconds to steam 200 ml of milk up to about 65 degrees Celsius. So that's impressive. And it's nice dry steam. The texturing is just as good as with any dual boiler I've used. The wand is a bit stubby. I'd like a bigger wand, wouldn't we all? But honestly, it's not an issue. I got used to that very quickly. The steam timer is unusual, but very handy. The Apex Legato and AVX DB1 all have this too, and I think it's a great little feature. When you're getting started, you can just use a thermometer once, look at the timer when you reach the desired temperature, and then don't bother with a the thermometer after that, as long as you're using the same volume of milk. 
Also, you can look at the timer when you switch from aeration to just heating and spinning the milk and tweak that accordingly if you end up under or over stretching your milk. Finally, let's run through some of the app settings and options. It's got an auto on schedule, fast power up mode, auto off can be adjusted from off to 120 minutes, flush time can be adjusted from one to 15 seconds. You can toggle between different pump profiles if you want. You can calibrate the pressure, temperature, steam flow and water flow. There's a stats tab that gives you a counter for espresso, steam, hot water and flushes and tells you the firmware versions. And you can choose Celsius or Fahrenheit. Change the decimal separator and various other things that are way too clever for me to understand. You can disable the steam if you don't want to use it, but if you do that, don't be a complete muppet like me. Forget you did that and then contact them to say it's broke. Other than the shots you've seen me pulling with this as I've been talking, I'm not going to do any demos in the video or it'll end up being way too long. I will be doing loads of shorts with this, so see them if you want to see various different profiles in action. They've sent me their new high extraction basket, so I'll do some experimenting with them too and we'll upload them as shorts and on Insta and TikTok. I'll need to send this back to them or send it on to another reviewer, but I'm going to buy one. So let me know in the comments or in the community thread if there's any specific videos you'd like to see with it. Coffee cap comment of the week. Mad Daddy 2553 says, Man's copying the milkshake man, Lamau. Man's not copying the milkshake man, because man doesn't know who the milkshake man is. Milkshake man. Thank you very much for watching, and if you think coffee is plenge, which is a phrase I've just made up, and you enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how-tos on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye!